All right. Uh, good morning, uh, Christine, Jonathan, and then Mark. Simulan na siguro natin, and let's just uh, uh, let the others uh, join um, in the middle of our discussion. Pero kailangan ko kasing matapos itong module uh, 4 today so that uh, you'll be ready for the Lab XR on Monday. Lab XR 2, which covers uh, piecewise linear interpolants, uh, specifically piecewise linear, uh, sorry, I'm coverage now, piecewise um, interpolants, specifically piecewise linear interpolants and um, cubic splines. So on uh, June is on Monday. So hopefully you started the coding equation 4.11 or yung available uh, uh, rows nung equation 4.11 because uh, you will need this. And uh, last time we discussed, ano nga ba yung ibig sabihin pag meron tayong cubic spline? So remember, if we have a cubic spline, it should satisfy five conditions. So yun yung naka-enumerate sa definition two. So kailangan sa bawat sub-interval, meron tayong cubic polynomial S sub I. Second, interpolatory requirement, which is a given, kasi ang pinag-uusapan natin dito ay interpolating functions. So kahit piecewise function, yung ginagamit nating pang interpolate, dapat dumaraan pa rin tayo dun sa mga data points. And then we impose continuity of three functions, S, S prime, and S double prime. And remember that these conditions for continuity are met by forcing the issue that the function value between two consecutive pieces of the conditional functions are equal at their common boundary points. So halimbawa, um, sa i at sub-interval consisting of numbers between x1 and x sub i plus 1, um, ang nag-govern na piece ng uh, conditional function ay si s sub i. Meanwhile, on the i plus 1 interval between x sub i plus 1 and x sub i plus 2, ang nag-govern ay si s sub i plus 1. Again, to ensure continuity, we want the function values of s i and S sub I plus 1 to agree at their common boundary point, which is X sub I plus 1. Ganun din, yung para sa derivative, saka second derivatives nila. And using conditions 1 until 5, we have found 4N minus 2 equations. Right, So this 4N minus 2 equations will help us determine the unknown parameters AI, BI, CI, and DI for each of the piece uh, each of the pieces S sub I of our cubic spline. Ang problema natin dito ay 4N, yung hinahanap natin coefficients. Meron kasing N A sub I's, N na B sub I's, N na C sub I's, at N na D sub I's. Kaya lang 4N minus 2 lamang yung equations natin. So that makes our, uh, our system underdetermined. There would be infinitely many solutions or at least there would be more than one solution. Right, so that's the idea. So, ibig sabihin, meron pa tayong additional degrees of freedom dito. We can afford to impose some more conditions so that that uh, conditions or that those new conditions will require or will give us two more equations to uh, completely fill up the uh, system of equations that we have. And only after then, can we determine ano nga ba yung itsura ng cubic spline natin, okay? So uh, also last time we went through a tedious process of uh, manipulating these equations in order to come up with a nicer way to compute the unknown parameters. Okay, so pinuha natin si 4.7, which is expressing d sub i in terms of the c sub i. Tapos equation uh, 4.8 which computes a sub i plus 1 in terms of the um, uh, ai's, bi's, and the h sub i's. Pero hindi pala natin ito masyadong kailangan, no? Kasi alam na natin ang a sub i ay dapat equal sa f of x sub i, i going from 1 to n plus 1. So yung interpolatory nodes or yung function values sa interpolatory uh, abscissas ay dapat equal dun sa a sub i's. So, tapos yung B sub i's na express natin in terms of the C sub i's. And then yung B sub i's na sulat natin in terms of the A i's and the C i's. So, kung mapapansin nyo, all of the other parameters 
except A sub i, ay nakadepende na lang ngayon sa C sub i's. So once we have computed the C sub i's, then we will be able to calculate B i and B i. The A i's are readily available, so that gives us the uh, all the parameters we needed to define our cubic spline. Okay. And uh, playing around with these equations, we came up with this generic equation, which will hold for two until n. Things in sabi ko na meron lang tayong uh, n minus one equations. Kulang pa tayo ng dalawa. Okay. Bakit kulang ng dalawa, sir? Sabi mo kailangan na lang natin na yah. C1, uh, C1 hanggang Cn. Kasi sa mga S, yung mga S sub i, yung subscript nila runs from 1 until n. Because we have n plus 1 points giving us n sub intervals. So we need n pieces, right? Pero kung makikita nyo, dun sa system of equation ko rito, bakit ko kinompute hanggang C sub n plus 1? What do you think? Hindi, hindi, hindi nyo ba na-feel na parang ano? No, short change ko kayo na sabi ko si uh, mga C sub i's i's going from 1 until n pero yung equation ko rito merong biglang C sub n plus 1 bakit ang ginawa kong system of equation dito yung dinidesign nating system of equation ay n plus 1 by n plus 1 bakit kaya um any idea Oh, kahit wala. <laughs> Bonus points sa sa prom set. Oh, masyado pang maaga para magtanong ng mga ganitong bagay. But anyway, I needed to compute even C sub M plus 1 because if you go back to, I think it was... Um, for instance, in di. So si di hanggang dn yung hinahanap natin, di ba? Pero para mahanap si dn, kailangan ko yung c sub n plus 1 minus c sub n over 3 h sub n. So kailangan ko talaga si c sub n plus 1 para compute si di. Kahit kay di, kailangan uh, para kay bn, kay b sub n, kailangan ko compute si c sub n plus 1 para mahanap si Bn. So that's why I was forced to expand the uh, the search for the CIs a little bit more, dagdag computing ko rin si C sub n plus 1 para ma completely determine ko yung natitirang mga parameters. Okay? And then our goal for today is to look at some common conditions that are imposed for the top and the bottom rows of this matrix equation so that we can solve for the system, right? Kasi ang, por ang purpose ko, bakit natin to sinulat na AX equals B, ay para ipacompute na lamang sa ating computing sol solver yung A inverse times B. Right? So if you already did linear algebra, pag meron kang AX equals B, tapos si AA invertible, you can multiply both sides by A inverse. So you get X equals A inverse B because A inverse times A is just the identity matrix. So this vector X contains our C sub I's, then pag nakuha natin to from our solver, we'll just plug in this C sub I's in the formula for D sub I's and the B sub I's, okay? Kaya I suggested last time uh, for the exercise on Monday, you can already start thinking about how to uh, encode this middle rows. All the rows in the system, uh, in the matrix equation, aside from the top and the bottom, it's a common to sa lahat ng splines because these uh, middle rows are direct consequence of imposing the five conditions from the definition. So, ang um, na lang to a problem that you will be asked to solve would be the top and the bottom rows. Okay. Na sinilip ko yung lab exer na sinulat ng isa sa mga lab instructors. Masyadong mabait, I mean, maliit lang yung system na kakailanganin nyo. So, ibig sabihin, uh, kung binigyan kayo doon ng, say, 8 points, so yung system na gagawin nyo ay 8 by 8 lamang. So, ibig sabihin, kayang manumanuhin yung pag-encode pag nitong matrix na to, saka yung matrix na to. Right? 
sa pwedeng computein nyo sa Excel or by a calculator, ano yung values ng mga laman ng matrix na to. Pero pag ako yung nagbigay, halimbawa, sa problem set ng data, na halimbawa, 1,000 points. So, ibig sabihin, uh, near to impossible na, or hindi naman near to impossible. Pero kung uh, encode nyo siya pa isa-isa, matatagalan talaga kayo. So, probably before we do the problem set, uh, take some time to think about how to encode this system um, in a nice way. Because anyway, ito naman ay zero yung laman except sa tatlong row, uh, tatlong columns sa bawat rows. Okay. So, pwedeng uh, magsabihin nyo dun sa programming language nyo, no? gumawa ka ng matrix ng laman ay puro zeros. Tapos maglagay ka ng panibagong for loop kung saan i-define natin yung mga tatlong non-zero entries dun sa ating rows. Okay. And then, unfortunately, we cannot afford to use fancy and efficient techniques in order to solve uh, such a linear system. Kasi yung topic of uh, methods of solving linear equations ay nasa math 175 pa. So, kaya ngayon, mag-rely lang ako sa, or mag lang tayo sa intrinsic or, or built-in uh, features ng programming languages on solving A inverse B. So, kay MATLAB, Ang pagkocompute ng inverse ay pwedeng either x equals i n v of a. Kung matrix A yung tawag nyo dun sa coefficient matrix, ilagay nyo, sa, uh, ilagay nyo siya sa loob ng command na i n v. Yun yung pagkuhan nyo ng inverse. Then star is the uh, matrix multiplication syntax. So times b. Bibigay nyo sa inyo eto. Or sinasuggest minsan ni MATLAB, instead na yung tunay na inverse, ang gamitin natin ay yung pseudo-inverse. I think the syntax for the pseudo-inverse is p in. So, kapag ka-invertible si A, halos parehas yung makukuha yung value kay x sa dalawang syntax na to. It's just that mass efficient computationally yung p inverse, yung pseudo-inverse, instead dun sa inverse. Pero kung maliit lang naman yung system, at saka yung system natin ay sparse naman, when we say we have a sparse matrix, ibig sabihin maraming zeros yung matrix natin, hindi ganun kamahalan yung pagkocompute ng inverse. Alright? So you can choose between these two if you are using MATLAB. Okay? Now, let's proceed to our uh, real business for today. Kailangan ma-define natin yung top and bottom rows. And look at, we will look at two common conditions para dito sa top and bottom rows, okay? The first one is commonly used whenever there are no other information present in the problem. Kung wala na tayong ibang alam kundi yung interpolation nodes, pwede natin gamitin yung not a not boundary conditions. So the not a not boundary conditions require that the uh, third derivatives of the cubic splines or sorry, third derivative of the cubic splines are uh, continuous on the uh, on the first and second, and then the n and the n plus one subinterval. So, ibig sabihin, um, kung ito yung interpolatory uh, interval, so marami ka pang x sub i dyan, tapos meron kang x sub n, x sub n plus one, all right? Uh, and then meron ka pang x sub, kailangan ko palang x sub 3, saka x sub n minus 1. So dapat si s1 at saka si s2, yung third derivatives nila ay continuous. Right? So, di pala s1 and s2. Dapat si s, dun sa interval starting from x1 until x3, dapat continuous yung third derivative niya. So for the third derivative of S to be continuous from X1 to X3, dahil si S1, as si S ay equal kay S1 sa kalahate ng X1 to X3, equal siya sa S2 dun sa kalahate ng X1 to X3, the, and S1 and S2 are both cubic functions. So you try say some possible point of discontinuity will be at X2. Correct? So, doon posibleng hindi maging continuous si S triple prime. 
So the not to not boundary condition will impose that S1 triple prime and S2 triple prime will have the same values at X sub two. And similarly, we want the uh, third derivative of S to be continuous from X sub N minus one until X sub N plus one. That will force us that uh, S sub N minus one and S sub N to share the common value or their third derivatives to share the common value at X sub N. Okay, so if we spin and boost that in, the S sub one triple prime evaluated at X two, that but equal chi S sub uh, two triple prime at X sub two, and S sub N minus one triple prime evaluated at X sub N, I dapat equal kay S sub N triple prime evaluated at X sub N. So ito yung continuity ng third derivatives doon sa first two pieces ng spline at saka doon sa last two pieces. All right? Is it clear kung paano ko nakuha itong dalawang uh, conditions sa to? Medyo mahirap, no? Kasi um, ang hirap i-discuss ng mga subscripts. Sandaling maka makalito ng mga subscripts. So, hopefully you follow. Kung medyo malabo, pwede nyo gawin yung katulad ng ginagawa ko na dinodrawing ko siya. Para makita ko visually kung ano yung kailangan kong impose sa conditions. Alam ko kung ano yung equations na bubuin ko. Okay? And then remember that uh, S sub I of X takes the generic form a sub i plus b sub i x minus x sub i plus c sub i x sub i, oh sorry, x minus x sub i squared plus di x minus x i cubed, right? So, ibig sabihin, pag kinompute yung third derivative niyan, ano lang yung matitira? So, ito, zero yung third derivative niya. Ito, linear function, so third derivative niya is zero. Ito ay quadratic function, so third derivative niya ay zero. Ito ay cubic, so constant yung third derivative niya. In fact, its third derivative will be 6 d sub i. Okay. So it turns out na hindi, pala, hindi lang pala third derivative doon sa first two pieces at last two pieces yung nagagarantee natin. Kasi constant lang pala yung uh, third derivative in terms of the parameters, uh, in terms of the uh, x sub i's. Ah, uh, sorry, in terms of x. Hindi nagde-depend nagde de kay x yung s sub i triple prime. So, hindi lang pala ito. Tama nga ba? Aha, aha. Ay, hindi. Ito nga lang dalawa yung nasasatisfy ko. Kasi na, though independent siya sa x sub i's, Ang problema nakadepende siya kay i. So ibig sabihin, if I want s1 triple prime of x2 to be equal to s2 triple prime of x2, ibig sabihin, ibig sabihin dapat yung 6d uh, 6d1 ay equal kay 6d2. All right? Kasi ito i equals 1, plug in niyo dito, makukuha niyo 6d1. Independent siya kay x2. So kahit na ano palang excess on the first and second sub-intervals, 6D1 lamang yung gusto kong common value nung derivative. Okay? But in the same token, when I is equal to 2, kasi meron kang S2 triple prime dito sa right-hand side, magkakaroon tayo ng 6D2. And continuity will be guaranteed if these two guys will be equal to each other. In summary, we'll have D1 equals D2. And the same thing goes here for the other condition. We will have d sub n minus 1 must be equal to d sub n. Okay? And now, remember, the system na binuuna natin ay purely in terms of the c sub i's. So we need to express these two equations in terms of the c sub i's. Tapos sila yung ilalagay ko dun sa top and bottom row. Hopefully, kakasya sila. All right? So, tingnan natin. So, nga ba equal si d1? Well, Substitute natin dito kasi this seems to be a perfect fit. Equation 4.7. Kasi nga, uh, ang equation natin in terms of the di, ah, in terms of the ci's, 
Pero meron ako D1 equals D2. So yung D1, ay ibig sabihin meron na akong I equals 1. So magkakaroon ako ng C2 minus C1 over 3H1 equals D2. So gagamitin ko yung equation 4.7, but this time I equals 2. So I'll have C3 minus C2 all over 3H2. Tapos ito yung equation na gagamitin natin dito. So itong D1 equals D2 pala will boil down as this equation in terms of the C sub i's. And then we can just simplify this. Multiply both sides by 3. So the 3's in the denominator will be gone. And then I'll multiply both sides by H1 times H2. So magiging C2 minus C1 times H2 equals C3 minus C2 times H1. And then I want all those with C sub i's to be on the left-hand side. So gawin kong uh, C2, H2, minus C1, H2, minus C3, H1, plus C2, H1, equals zero. And then I'll just uh, combine uh, those with a common C sub i terms or factors. Sino sino yan? Oh, I will multiply uh, both sides first by negative 1 para makuha ko yung itsura na gusto natin dun sa, dun sa system matrix. So multiply both sides by negative 1. So this guy will be negative. Right-hand side is still 0. And then I'll rearrange this as C1, H1, uh, then minus what? H1 plus H2 times C2 plus H1 C3 equals zero, or C3 H1. Parehas lang naman. So, ito na C3 H1. Okay? Tama ba? Double check nyo guys yung algebra ko. Masyadong ba ang maaga para mag-solve? <laughs> so, hopefully this is correct. And then, isulat ko siya in terms of a vector equation and see if this will fit into the linear system or the system of equations in matrix form that we have above. So, pwede ko itong isulat as H1, negative H1 plus H2, and then H1 times C1, C2, C3 equals 0. All right? Pag multiply nyo itong uh, 1 by 3 matrix na to by the 3 by 1 matrix here, you will get this guy equal to 0. So ito yung equation na nakuha natin mula kay D1 equals D2. And let's see if this will fit into the, into the linear system that we have above. Palik tayo sa taas. Okay. Right. So ibig sabihin gusto kong itong vector na to ma-multiply ng C1, C2, C3. Luckily, C1, C2, and C3 are the first three rows of the uh, matrix of unknown. So para mag-swap na mapamultiply kay C1, C2, C3, itong tatlong um, non-zero entries na to, ibig sabihin dapat ilagay ko sila sa unang tatlong columns ng first row. Okay? Para pag minultiply ko itong buong row na to by this entire column, ang nagkakaroon lamang ng non-zero product ay yung first three guys which is basically this, which, uh, which gives us the equation emanating from D1 equals D2. Okay. And uh, yeah, and we do the same thing for uh, D sub N minus one and D sub N. Maukuha naman natin etong huling, uh, sorry, etong huling row ng ating equation, right? And you see why we needed to place these three numbers at the last three columns of the last row. Kasi kung i-expand natin yung kabilang equation dun sa ibaba, kailangan natin ng Hn, C sub n minus 1, minus this guy times Cn, times uh, plus H sub n minus 1, times C sub n plus 1. So yung multipliers nila ay yung huling tatlong Cn's. 
kaya napalagay sila dun sa huling tatlong columns ng huling rows. And then notice that the right-hand sides uh, are the top and bottom right-hand side uh, entries are both zero. Kasi zero yung right-hand side. So nakuha natin mula dun sa dalawang additional conditions. And then no loop now, but we already completed the system of equation we needed uh, to give us a determined, uh, a purely determined um, cubic spline. Namely, we'll get the not a not uh, cubic spline. All right. Now, completo na to. Sa problem, given yung mga h sabay, sila lang yung mga lengths ng subintervals, right? Na consider natin. So right hand side naman, aside from the h sabay's, meron siyang mga a sabay's. Pero yung mga a sabay's by our definite uh, by our derivation last time, alam natin mga function values lang sila. Sila yung f of x sabay's. So this system is uh, this system now is completely determined. So ipa-compute niyo yung value ni c sa programming language niyo. You'll get the coefficients a a1, a2, a3 hanggang kay d sub n. All right? So, uh, is this derivation making sense? Of course, hindi nyo naman kailangan simulan yung derivation mula dun sa ginawa natin last time. Kasi alam na natin na sa kahit anong spline, eto na yung middle rows. Ang kailangan nyo lang possibly recreate ay yung pagkocompute ng top and bottom rows. So, I hope the, uh, the, um, the process, how we got the top and the bottom row is clear. Kasi baka sa problem set, mag-define ako ng kakaibang cubic spline na kailangan yung, uh, kailangan yung uh, i-design yung top and bottom row ng coefficient matrix. Okay? But for now, uh, equation 4.12 give us the system of equation para sa not and not cubic spline. Okay? Now, let's look at a particular example Para siguro, pag nagpo-program kayo nito, you're preparing your program for lab X or 2, uh, pwede nyo ma-check yung answer nyo by comparing what you will get with example 4.3. So, pwede gawin yung gawin nyo. Ah, pwede ganun yung gawin nyo. So, pag nagla-lab X or kayo, nagtatry kayo mag-write ng program, uh, siguraduhin nyo na yung program nyo mag-work dun sa example. Dapat ma-create yung examples bago nyo siya gamitin dun sa problem sa X or. All right? Para merong sanity check. So, for instance, in uh, example three, I think isang uh, isang example ng usefulness ng cubic spines. Halimbawa sa isang lab, uh, gusto mo makagawa ng model para sa tungsten emittance. Pero sa lab, uh, limited lamang yung say number of experiments na pwede mong gawin. Pero gusto mo makabuo ng isang model para sa emittance ng tungsten from 300 degrees to 1100 degrees. Pero syempre, hindi mo kaya i-measure yung uh, tungsten emittance sa lahat ng temperature values between 300 and 1100. Sorry, nakalimutan ko dito kung ano yung unit ng temperature, kung Celsius ba, Fahrenheit, or uh, Kelvin. So, isipin na lang natin isang measure yan ng uh, temperature. Nakalimutan ko rin yung... Uh, unit of measure para sa tungsten emittance, but that's not too important for us. So illustrate natin yung usefulness. So kung limited yung, uh, yung time or limited yung resources to do experiments, and yet you want to get uh, a model, so pwedeng gawin natin ay set certain temperature values. So here we use the uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 data uh, 8 temperature values and on each of these temperature values we look at the tungsten emittance so para nag experiment ka sa lab uh, sinet mo yung temperature tapos pag in, in expose mo yung tungsten dun sa temperature na yon um uh, measure mo kung gaano kataas yung emittance tapos nakuha mo itong values ito now if you want to model tungsten emittance using the not a not uh, cubic spline right Ito yung makukuha natin. Uh -huh. yeah. So, of course, yung mga h sub i's makukompute nyo. So, ito yung mga a sub i's. Right? Ito yung mga function values. Then, ito yung mga x sub i's. And then, if you compute 
for the uh, consecutive uh, uh, the lengths of the uh, sub intervals or the difference between two consecutive x sub i's, makukuha natin yung h sub i's. So, um, natin yung x sub i's, at yung f of x sub i's, right? Tapos yung h sub i's, sila lang yung lengths ng bawat interval. So, h sub 1 would be uh, 100. That's 400 minus 300. h sub 2 would be 100 as well. 500 minus 400. And then uh, h sub 3 would be 200. h sub 4 is 100. h5 is 500. Ah, it's 100, 100, 100. Okay, so yun yung mga h sub i's. So using this, guys, uh, mabubuo natin yung system matrix. All right? Tapos pag pinasolve nyo sa system as a, sa programming language nyo o sa computer nyo, yung c sub i's, Ito yung makukuha nyo. Okay. Ito yung AI, BI, CI, DI. So kung mapapansin nyo, itong mga to, sila yung mga nandito. Alright. Uh, na A sub I's. Hindi ko na sinama yung uh, A sub N plus 1. Kasi pit, meron tayong 8 points. So meron tayong pitong sub intervals. Pitong piraso ng spline. So pito lang... Um, 28 lang naman yung hanap kung coefficient. Sila na lang yung dinisplay dito. So ito yung function values. Sila yung A sub i's. Yung C sub i's na galing dun sa code. Tapos pwede nyo rin ipacompute dun sa code nyo yung mga B sub i's at sa mga D sub i's depending on the C sub i's. And the A sub i's possibly. Alright? So ito yung mga parameters ng cubic spline. Tapos pag pinabuo ko, saka pinasimplify ko yung cubic spline o yung not a not cubic spline, makukuha ko tong equation na to. And this gives us the model for the uh, function emittance between 300 degrees and 1100 degrees. So meaning, if I want, say, to get the function emittance at, uh, say, uh, 750 degrees na temperature, okay, Hindi ko na kailangan pumunta uli dun sa lab tapos magawa ng experiment. Kasi baka mahal yung pag, um, pagkukonduct ng experiment. Pag-expose ng tungsten uh, sa 750 degrees or wala ka ng material. So pwedeng gamitin mo na lang tong model. Compute for S of 750 degrees. So gagamitin mo itong piraso na to ng spline. Kasi this holds between 700 degrees and 800 degrees. Plug in x equals 750, and then you'll get the approximation for the tungsten emittance at that temperature. Okay? So ito yung isa sa mga utility nung pagkakaroon ng model. Hindi mo kailang iran yung isang possibly mahal or tedious or mahirap na experiment just to get our data. All right? Pero approximation lang to. Pero uh, you will see later na yung cubic splines meron naman siyang magandang error bound. So, uh, yeah, so that's it. Uh, if you want to check further kung tama yung code natin or tama tong cubic spline, ipoplot natin ito sa ating, uh, sa ating software. Okay. At makita, dapat at least yung interpolatory requirements uh, requirement ay masatisfy niya. Kasi mahirap visually tingnan yung satisfaction ng continuity ni S, S, uh, continuity ni S prime, S double prime, at saka ni S triple prime. Madaling ma-check yung interpolatory condition sa continuity ng resulting spline. And true enough, if you look at the graph of S, at pa siya. Okay. Yung naka-circle, sila yung interpolatory points. Sila yung subdivision points ng ating cubic spline. So ibig sabihin, ito ay cubic function, piraso ng isang cubic function, certain part ng isang cubic function, ito ay ibang cubic function, ito ay ibang cubic function, and so on. Okay? And you see that this function S is continuous over the interval 300 to 1100, and uh, duman siya dun sa mga uh, interpolatory nodes as required by the definition of an interpolating function. Okay? Tapos ano pa yung mapapansin natin dito sa graph na to? Kung mapapansin nyo, hindi gaanong malaki yung oscillations sa pagitan ng dalawang data points. 
imagine if we will have a degree 7 interpolating polynomial, baka nagkaroon tayo ng wiggles o oscillation sa pagitan ng dalawang data points. Kasi nga, pag tumataas yung degree, mas nagiging prone, nagiging prone sa, yung, sa Runge phenomenon or sa existence ng oscillations dun sa tail end ng interval. So posibleng kung mataas yung degree, baka ganito yung itsura ng ating interpolating function, okay? which will have crazy wiggles on certain parts of our subinterval. Okay? Now, hindi ganun ka dami yung oscillations kasi sa bawat piraso o bawat subinterval, gumamit lang tayo ng degree 3 um, approximating function. Okay? And then also, kung mapapansin nyo, yung cubic function, hindi ganun kalalim yung curvature niya. Diba sa parabola, napakalaki ng curvature niya. Kasi kung, kung concave upward siya, napakalaki nung, hindi ko alam kung paano siya describe Pero masyado siyang curvy. Um, masyadong malalim yung curve niya. So, ibig sabihin, mataas yung curvature niya. So, kumbaga sa driving, mahirap magmaniobra dito kasi medyo uh, malalim yung kurbada dito sa portion nito. Compared sa cubic function na medyo relax yung curve, so hindi ganon kabilog yung pagiging concave niya. Right? So and we will see later that a certain type of cubic splines will give us the interpolating function of the least curvature. And usually we want the curvature to be small para ma-avoid lalo yung oscillations o yung wiggles ng ating uh, approximating function. Okay? Pero that's uh, going ahead of myself. May isa pang example sa so not a not cubic spline. And that is revisiting the data we have from last time uh, from the piecewise linear interpolant na tinanong na natin ano kaya yung probability or approximate to the uh, approximation to the probability that a randomly selected math, math 174 exam between January 2013 and, 24, and 2014 will be passing. So yung data nito, ito yung katulad dun sa piecewise linear interpolants. I think there I used um, uh, to get the uh, the mean and the standard dev. Parang gumamit ako ng more than 200 uh, data points. Tapos, syempre, hindi ko naman gusto magkaroon ng interpolating function na degree 199. And to simplify further the work, I can put that model into the probability distribution function ng normally distributed data. Tapos, gusto kong palitan si F. So, yung PDF, I uh, remember ang idea nun, yung probability that the score is between alpha and beta would be the integral from alpha to beta of f of x dx, where f of x is the uh, probability distribution function. All right? At sabi natin, mahirap i-evaluate yung probability, yung integral ng probability distribution function kasi wala siyang closed form antiderivative. So, kailangan talaga natin maghanap ng way para ma-approximate itong integral na to. And since we don't know numerical integration techniques for now, so, papalitan ko si F ng isang interpolating function. Kasi guaranteed tayo, or at least theoretically, dapat si F I approximately equal dun sa interpolating function niya. Okay, so here, I replaced F using the, uh, using how many? I think using 11 equally spaced points between uh, 0 and 1, from 0% to 100%. Kinuha ko yung F of X sa bias. Tapos ginamit ko siya dun sa system of equations. And I got this polynomial S. Okay. Kung mapapansin nyo, parehas yung first two pieces. Kasi masyado akong demanding dun sa first two pieces at saka dun sa last two pieces. Remember, sa not a not boundary condition, dapat equal yung third, yung third derivatives nung uh, first uh, two pieces of the spline and then the last two pieces. At Medyo mabigat palang condition yon para sa isang cubic polynomial. Kaya, napapansin, kaya mapansin nyo dito, equal yung first two sa kayong last two pieces. I think yun din yung nangyari dito sa taas, sa tungsten emittance. Dahil demanding tayo dun sa first two pieces and then the last two pieces, nagkataon na naging equal na yung dalawang 
uh, yung unang dalawa at saka huling dalawang piraso ng splines because of the not and not boundary conditions. Okay. Now, so i-integrate ko to over the interval 0 0.6 to 0 uh, to 1 para malaman ano yung probability na passing siya. Ibig sabihin between 60% and 100% yung score niya. So basically, gagamitin ko itong apat na functions na to. Integrate ko sila over their respective domains. Right? Tapos kukunin ko lang yung sum kasi additive naman ng integral. So makukuha ko ay 34.39%, which is not that far away from what we got from the piecewise linear interpolant. Mula dun sa piecewise linear interpolant, I think we got 34.5% or somewhere around that number. So pag gumamit tayo ng not a not cubic spline, 34.39 yung makukuha natin. Okay. Now that's for the not a not uh, cubic spline. Another commonly used uh, type of spline is the clamp or the complete cubic splines. Possible natin makuha yung clamp or cubic or complete cubic spline kapag kaalam natin yung value ng derivative dun sa dalawang endpoints ng original interpolatory interval. So if we know f prime of a and f prime of b, it is but natural that we want to capture this information into our interpolating function. So that's why it's uh, almost natural na iset ko yung s prime of a maging equal dun sa f prime of a at saka yung s prime of b maging equal sa f prime of b. And these two equations will give us the top and the bottom rows. Okay. Tignan natin how. Okay. So again, ang gusto natin ay S prime of A ay equal kay F prime of A. And then S prime of B ay equal kay F prime of B. Again, it is reliant on the F prime of A and F prime of B being given. So dapat given yung F prime saka uh, F prime values kay A and B. Now, how to derive the equation um, for this? Compute natin yung S by prime. Yung S by prime ay uh, B sub i plus 2Ci x minus xi plus di, uh, sorry, plus 3Di x minus x sub i squared. Okay. Now, anong alam natin dito? Uh, si A ay equal kay x sub 1. So, ibig sabihin, kailangan yung x prime at x1, at x1 ay equal kay f prime of a. Pero si s nagko-coincide lang kay s1 sa first sub-interval. So, dito ko ipa-plug in si x1. Okay. Pero pag nag-plug in ako dito ng x1, kakaroon ako ng x1 minus x1, x1 minus x1, so matitira lang si b1. So we want B1 to be equal to F prime of A. And you can imagine the same thing will happen here. We will get B sub N is equal to F prime of B. Kaya lang hindi ito useful for us kasi remember, nagsettle na tayo ng unknowns lamang or ang primary unknowns natin ay mga C sub I's. So I need to find a way to write B sub 1 in terms of the uh, C sub I's. But if you revisit the... Uh, equations that we have uh, from last time, we can use equation 4.8. Sabi ni equation 4.8, si B1 ay equal kay A2 minus A1 all over H1 minus 2C1 plus C2 all over 3H1. Okay. So magagamit natin to dito sa baba. Okay. Ito si B1. So equal to dapat kay F prime of A. Tapos i-isolate ko lang yung C sub I sa, sa left hand side. So we'll have this. Lipat ko to dito. Pero magkaka-minus sign siya. Tama ba? And then I'll multiply both sides by negative 3. So, mawawala na ito. Kakaroon ito ng negative 3. Higing plus 3 times this guy. Alright? And then, we'll have 2C1H1 
plus C two H one equals uh, three times A two minus A one over H one minus three F prime of A, right? And then pag sinulat ko siya in vector form, I'll have two H one and then H one times C one C two equals this guy. Okay. So ito nakuha natin by imposing S prime of A equals uh, F prime of A. And then tingnan natin kung kakasya to dun sa system equation natin kanina. So let's see. Okay. Hindi pa. So here, dapat naka-multiply kay C1, C2 etong uh, dalawang elements na to. Luckily, si C1 at saka si C2 nasa unahan ng vector of unknowns. So we can put, actually, hindi pala nagmamatter kung sino mang mga sisabay sing nandito. No? Kasi pwede kong ilagay anywhere dun sa first row yung mga entries nito. But luckily, C1, C2 yung multiplier niya, which would be the top uh, two rows of the vector of unknowns. So dapat ito, nandun sa first two columns. Para pag ginawa natin yung ito times this guy, magkakamultiply talaga si C1 at saka si C2. And you see this two H1 go, went there, H1 went there, and then the right-hand side went there. Okay? Ganun din yung gagawin nyo dun sa ilalim naman. All right. And that will give us the clamp cubic spline. So if you want, uh, you can work out the tungsten problem kanina. Tapos singan nyo, ano yung pinagkaiba nung nut a nut at saka nung clamp cubic spline. All right. Now, ano yung magandang property ng clamp uh, cubic spline? Well, the clamp cubic spline attains the minimum curvature. So yung curvature ng isang function f sa isang point sa kanyang domain, ay approximately equal dun sa value ng F double prime. Okay? So ito yung definition ng curvature at a specific point. So siya yung function kappa. Right? Kaya alam, pwede natin itong i-approximate by just the absolute value of F double prime. Okay? Now, um, pag kinuha natin yung total curvature ng isang function, over the interval a, b. So, ibig sabihin, isa-sum up lang natin yung mga values ng mga kappa. Pero to, uh, to, to make our computations easier for the total curvature, pwedeng i-integrate na lamang yung f double prime uh, squared over the interval a, b. Uh, bakit naka-square? Kasi absolute value yung gusto ko. So, kesa mag-integrate ng absolute value, integrate ko na lang yung square. Kasi ito ay may kinalaman dun sa L2 norm ng second derivative. So the L2 norm squared of the second derivative is a nice measure or a nice approximation for the curvature. And actually, it's, it kind of makes sense kasi remember sa math 36 natutunan natin na yung uh, concavity ng isang function ay nakadepende sa sign ni F double prime, right? So si F double prime ay positive, concave up yung function Kung siya negative, concave down yung function. Tapos yung measure ng gano'n siya ka-concave, so gano'n kalalim yung kurbada ng function at a specific point, nakadepende siya dun sa magnitude ng F double prime. So you expect that the graph lo that looks like this will have a higher curvature than say a graph that looks like this. Okay? Kasi mas mabilog o mas curvy yung graph na to kesa sa graph na ito. So what theorem 4.2 tells us ay kung gusto mo yung uh, interpolating function na may pinakamaliit na curvature, aside syempre sa piecewise linear, uh, as a piecewise linear interpolant, kasi yun naman uh, zero yung curvature nun, kasi zero yung second derivative kapag ka-linear yung function. Pero if you're talking about smooth interpolating functions, uh, kahit polynomial of high degree, kahit uh, trigonometric uh, interpolant yan, walang tatalo sa pababaan ng curvature kay uh, clamp cubic splines. Okay? 
because the clamped cubic splines attains the minimum curvature among all smooth interpolating functions. OK, uh, sorry, I might take uh, five more minutes. I hope you don't mind. Para lang matapos natin yung coverage para sa, para sa lab exercise. OK, but don't worry, hindi ko naman kayo pagkocompute ng curvature. So gusto ko lang dito mag-illustrate ng isang dahilan kung bakit gusto ng maraming uh, modelers yung clamp cubic splines. Kasi na-prevent nito yung pagkakaroon ng oscillations. Kasi siya yung may pinakamaliit na curvature among all smooth interpolating functions. So hindi ko kayo pakocompute ng uh, curvature. Siguro gagamitin ko itong property na to by say, ano ba sa problem set, sabihin ko na give me the give me an interp a smooth interpolating function for the following data points so that the curvature is minimum. So, hindi ko sasabihin directly na clamp cubic spline, pero dapat matandaan nyo, ah, may pinakamalit na curvature ay yung clamp cubic splines. So, yeah. And then we'll end by looking at theorem 4.3, which gives us the error bound for the clamp cubic splines. I forgot why hindi ko sinama yung uh, error term para sa not a not boundary condition or not a not cubic spline. So since nakalimutan ko siyang ilagay sa work text, hindi ko kayo tatanungin about that. Pero if you are working with a clamp cubic spline, so here's the error bound. Um, kapag ka yung function f natin ay merong uh, continuous na fourth derivative over the interval a, b, then the error is guaranteed to be no more than 5 over 384 h to the fourth times the maximum of the fourth derivative. Dahil gusto ko yung maximum ng absolute value ng fourth derivative, kailangan maging continuous yung fourth derivative ni f. Para magamit natin yung extreme value theorem, which will guarantee that this guy will exist over the interval a, b. So kunin yung pinakamalaking value ng fourth derivative, i-multiply nyo sa 5 over 384 times h to the fourth, then the error is guaranteed not to exceed that number. Okay. And then you will see na mukhang hindi direct yung effect ng number of data points na ginamit. Uh, and then the interpolatory abscissas themselves kasi naka-factor in sila kay H. Because H represents the length of the longest sub-interval. Okay, siya yung pinakamalaking H sub I. Now, let's look at one specific uh, application of this theorem. And for that, let's revisit example 4.2. Wala na to sa wala na to sa work text na isipan ko lang siyang idagdag uh, before having the lecture yesterday in the other class. So discuss na rin natin. So kaya kakailangan ko yung five more minutes. Sorry guys, over time again. Pero we are here revisiting the textbook publisher problem wherein the textbook publisher would like to create a table of sine and cosine values from 0 to 45 degrees. And the thing is, gusto niyang mahanap, gano dapat yung, uh, yung common increment between two theta values so that the error using the uh, approximate from the clamp cubic spline will not introduce an error that is more than 10 to the minus 6. So gusto natin yung maximum error o yung error absolute ng value ng error ay hindi lalampas ng 10 to the minus 6. Tapos ang gamit natin ngayon ay clamp cubic spline. So kailangan natin yung error bound para sa clamp cubic spline. Kasi pag nag-guarantee natin na yung error bound o yung right-hand side ng inequality sa theorem 4.3 ay mas maliit sa 10 to the minus 6, then we are essentially forcing any error to be smaller than 10 to the minus 6, right? Because what we want here is to uh, impose the following condition. Yung uh, 5 over 384 h to the fourth um, times the maximum now fourth derivative of f evaluated at x. You know, pinakamalaking magnitude over excess from 0 to pi over 4. Dapat hindi yan lalampas ng 10 to the minus 6. But we know that the error is bounded above by this guy. So sure tayo na yung error ay hindi mas lalaki kesa sa 10 to the minus 6. 
pag pinili natin yung H so that this inequality is true. All right? So essentially, we are solving for X. Now, ano yung function F natin? Yung function F naman natin ay sine at cosine lamang. Kung sine, mapa sine man siya o mapa cosine, yung fourth derivative niya is either plus or minus sine or plus or minus cosine, right? Pwede nyo kompeten exacto kung ano yung derivative. Pero sure ako, yung absolute value nung derivative ay sine or cosine function lamang. And the sine and cosine functions are bounded above by 1. So I can replace this maximum by just 1. Kasi sine or cosine lang naman siya na nasa loob ng absolute value. Uh, Pusibling maging mas maganda yung, yung, um, yung value ni H or mas malaki yung value ni H kapag uh, gumamit ka ng sine function kasi ang maximum niya ay root 2 over 2 lamang. Pero kung pagsasabayin ko sila, pwede kong palitan itong maximum by 1. Kasi yung 1, mag-hold siya na upper bound para kay sine at kay cosine parehas. Okay. So, but essentially, I can set this inequality here. And then I will solve for H. Now, solving for H will give us H must be no more than the fourth root ng 384 over 5 times 10 to the minus 6. Okay. Okay, and then if you will compute this, this is approximately, compute ko na siya kahapon sa calculator. 0.093614 regions, or that's around 5.363681 degrees. So ito pala, kung gusto natin yung error ay hindi lalampas ng 10 to the minus 6. So ibig sabihin, yung pagitan dapat nung dalawang magkasunod na data points dun sa table natin ay hindi lalampas ng 5.36 degrees. And compare this to what we got from the piecewise linear interpolant. Sa piecewise linear interpolant, ang nakuha natin na, na maximum value kay H ay 0 0.16 degrees. At makikita nyo yung discrepancy. To attain the same level of accuracy, para masure tayo na yung error ay hindi lalampas sa 10 to the minus 6, ang kailangan lang natin sa cubic spline, yung increment ay around 5.36 degrees. Pero sa piecewise linear interpolant, dapat yung increment niya hindi lalampas ng 0.16 degrees. And you see, mas, parang mas economical yung gumamit ka ng, um, ng clamp cubic spline. Kasi kung 0 to 45 degrees, so uh, ballpark figures lang, pag-analyze natin. Kasi anong meron tayo ngayon? Meron tayong dalawang competing methods. Gagamit ba ako ng clamp cubic spline or gagamit ako ng piecewise linear interpolant? Then, alam ko na parehong method makakapagbigay sa akin ng same level of accuracy. Hindi lalampas ng 10 to the minus 6. Nagkaiba nga lang sila dun sa step size. So, insofar as error is concerned, tie si uh, clamp cubic spline at saka si linear interpolant. Kaya lang, in terms of computational expense, tingnan natin. So kung pagpalagay natin na halimbawa ito ay 5 degrees lang, so ballpark figures lang yung gagawin nating analysis. So remember, ang interval natin ay 0 to 45 degrees. So kung around 5 degrees yung increment, so kailangan ko ng 10 data points para kay 0 to 45 degrees. Tama ba? Some, yeah, kasi 9 tapos 10. So around 10. Around 10 data points. So, meron ako 9 pieces. 9 uh, S sub I's yung meron ako. Gagamit ako ng 10 points. So, ibig sabihin, meron akong 9 na uh, uh, 9 na piraso ng S na hinahanap. So, eh, bawat piraso, bawat S sub I may apat na parameters. So, dito, nagsasolve ako ng 36 na parameters. So that means to get accuracy 10 to the minus 6, tapos gagamit ako ng clamp cubic splines, kailangan kong mag-solve ng 36 parameters para ma-achieve yung error bound na yun. And that sounds, uh, that sounds uh, manageable, 36 lang naman yung parameters. Pero kung gagamit ako ng piecewise linear interpolant, 
pagpalagay na natin na uh, say 0.10 degrees ito, ilan yung kailangan natin? Uh, kung around 0.10 degrees yan, para mabuo yung 0 to 45, from 0 to 1, kailangan ko ng 10. Tama ba? Kailangan ko ng 10. So, kailangan ko ng 450. So, around 450 uh, parameters, uh, 450 sub-intervals yung kailangan kong i-compute. Around that number, right? So, around 450 intervals. And bawat interval, merong isang linear function. Dun sa linear function, merong dalawang unknowns. So, that means I will need around 900. Tama ba yung ballpark computation ko? So, ito ay around 0.10 pagpalagay na para lang mapadali yung computation. So, pero sige, gawin natin 0.2. So, kung point to siya, lima, uh, para makabot ako ng one, 45 times five, so that's around uh, 45 times five, five, 25, 20, around 225. So, pagpalagay natin, kailangan mo ng around 200 parameters. Okay? Para round lang yung mga numbers. So, we will need to com uh, 200 uh, intervals. So, I will need around 400 uh, unknown parameters. So sa piecewise linear function, kailangan natin mag-solve ng apat na raang parameters. Yung mga A sabays at saka mga B sabays compared to only 36 parameters kung gagamit ako ng piecewise at ng clamp cubic splines. So at the surface, mukhang mas okay talaga na gumamit ng piecewise at ng clamp cubic splines. Kasi 36 lang yung kailangan natin i-solve. But if you will dig deeper, paano ko ba nakakompute yung 36 na yon? Now, compute yung 36 na yon by solving AX equals B. And usually, napaka-costly napaka o napaka-mahal ng pagkocompute ng inverse ng isang matrix. So, kakaunti nga yung parameters, pero mukhang mahirap siyang isolve. Pero dito sa piecewise linear interpolant, 400 nga yung unknowns natin. Pero ano ba yung mga unknowns natin? Yung A sub I's, function values lang siya. Yung Yung B sabay sa mga slopes lang siya. So kahit marami to, baka naman mas madali silang i-compute kesa sa pagko-compute ng linear system dito. So yan yung mga tumatakbo sa isip ng isang applied mathematician or isang mathematician that are running experiments. So parehas lang naman yung accuracy ko na makukuha. Tapos ito, mas kukonti yung parameters pero mahirap makompute yung mga parameters. Ito, maraming parameters yung kailangan pero madali naman silang compute so, yun pa rin. Depende pa rin dun sa kakayahan mo, dun sa system. Pero kung experimental yung minomodel mo, ito 36 parameters yung kailangan mo. Kailangan mo lang ng 10 data points, right? Kasi 9 intervals, kailangan mo ng 10 interpolatory abscissas. So, kailangan mo ng 10 data points. Dito, 400 intervals, around 400 intervals yung kailangan mo. So, you will need around 401 data points. Eh kung mahirap mag-perform ng experiments, so ibig sabihin, ang hirap makuha ng piecewise linear interpolant. Madili ang compute yung mga A sub I's, pero mahirap namang ma-obtain yung data. So yan yung mga considerations sa pagpili ng appropriate method uh, among competing methods na parehas lang naman yung level of accuracy na kayang ibigay. So this is just a glimpse ng mga problems or mga decisions that had to be made uh, by mathematicians or applied mathematicians when we want to model real-life phenomena, okay? So I think I'll stop here. Sorry, over time na ako ng five minutes on top of the 10 minutes dismissal time. But I hope that's okay. I just really wanted to uh, finish uh, module four so that next week we can start with module five, which is already available in Canvas. So we'll be talking about curve fitting, and I will let you know why kailangan pa natin ng curve fitting Kasi ngayon meron na tayong parang strong method or strong interpolation theory which can provide us an approximation for a given data data set or for a given complicated function f. Bakit ko pa kailangan mag uh, mag define ng curve fitting at ano yung na-add yung bonus na wala dun sa interpolatory functions, okay? Uh, but before going there, on Monday you will have lab expert 2 which is about piecewise uh interpolating functions so saying nasa dulo ng uh, module na to 
So you can start thinking about this. If you will need to write codes for this, um, pwede nyo i-try yung code na sinulat nyo for the examples we have in the module, just to make sure that you have the right code before tackling these problems, okay? Now, any questions before we call it a day? Kung wala naman, okay, thank you guys for uh, waking up early today. Uh, admittedly, muntik na ako malate, uh, but uh, luckily I was still able to uh, to be on time. But uh, yeah, enjoy the rest of the day. Weekend na tomorrow, please find some time to rest so that you'll be ready for Monday wherein you'll have to have, uh, oh, you'll have to do lab exercise, all right? So uh, have a good weekend, guys, and uh, yeah, see you next week. Bye. Thank you, sir. All right. Salamat po.